Hello, this is Krista Marshall from MarshallArtStudioPhotography.com and today we're going to talk about the three most important elements that make your camera take a great picture. So the first thing that we're going to talk about, we're going to talk about the three elements, ISO, shutter speed, and aperture. Those three elements work together to make your picture look crisp, sharp, bright, airy, anything else. If you don't have any of those three elements, you're not going to have a great photo. A candle, a piece of paper, and a window shade. So, first of all, let's talk about ISO. You know, way back in the day when there were film cameras, there wasn't really, ISO wasn't really an element because they just didn't have the technology to be able to see in the dark. It's kind of like if I lit this candle and in a really, really dark room and your eyes can adjust to see the, can to see the candle. Just like when we sing happy birthday to someone and we turn the lights off, our actual our pupils dilate, our light sensitivity, our, our brain, you know, somehow reads information in the dark. It's kind of like that with ISO. Every camera has the ability of ISO. Now the, mo the more expensive camera that you have, obviously the greater the ISO capability. So that is ISO. ISO is being able to see in the dark. Let's talk about aperture. Now aperture really has to do with the lens, which is why I am a huge, huge fan of prime lenses. This is a 35mm 1.4. I started out on a 50mm 1.8. Um, I also have a 35mm 1.8. I love those lenses. They don't zoom, but the beauty of them is that how much light they can let in. So I'm going to show you right here. See how beautiful that light is coming in? Where a kit lens will only go to about here. A prime lens will go that much more opening of the lens to allow so much more light in. It's kind of like, like when I said about ISO, when you go into a dark room and your pupils dilate to allow more light in. So we're going to illustrate that with a piece of paper. So basically, to illustrate this, your lens is an opening, allowing light to come in. If I were to put sand in this tube of paper, uh, a good amount of sand is going to go through that hole. If I tighten it up even more, you're going to allow less sand to go through. If I have it really, really loose like this, a really loose funnel, this is what a prime lens would be doing. See how much more sand is going to go through that, that funnel? It's kind of like that. So let's talk about shutter speed. Shutter speed is essentially how fast your camera takes a picture. And I watched this video on YouTube a while back and it really illustrated it. In a DSLR camera, there is actually a shutter inside of it. Kind of like this. Kind of like this window shutter. And when you are, when you take a picture, your shutter quickly opens up to expose the sensor on the DSLR. It is open for a fraction of a time. Kind of like when you close your window really quickly. All those elements, ISO being able to see in the dark, aperture, how much light is coming into your lens, preferably a prime lens, one that doesn't zoom, one that can go down very, very far to allow a huge opening, and shutter speed. Now, the good thing to know about all three of these things is that when they all work together in the right way, you're going to have a properly lit photo. However, all of them have a drawback. So, if you pump up your ISO super, super, super high, the highest it can go, you are going to have some image grain um, into your photo. If you're in a really, really dark room, drawback to aperture, let's say you go down really, really low, it may, may or may not get everything in focus that you want to get in focus. And with the shutter speed, let's say you're trying to let in a lot of light, so you lower your shutter speed down a lot, then you could have some blur in your photo. So all of them you kind of have to understand when you are setting up your photo, you have three elements 
that you have to think about at all times. So let's say it's a sunny day outside. Um, the sun is really, really bright. Really, really bright. You're in um, the shade, and you're taking a picture of a child. Okay, this is a typical situation for me, pretty much every day. So I'm in the shade. I'm taking a picture of my my little two-year-old running around. Do I want a really, really low shutter speed? No, I do not, because I don't want my child to be blurry. I want my child to be in focus. And so I let's say I boost my shutter speed to probably 300 or you know 400, depending on how bright it is. If I'm in the shade, I could probably go my ISO to 100 or 200, possibly even 300, depending on the type of camera I have. The aperture, I would probably want to stay the same at maybe um, f2 to kind of get more of him in focus but have a really beautiful cream of background. Another example of, of using all these three elements together is, um, for example, if you're at a wedding and they're cutting the cake. It's really dark in there. You only have a few lights um, coming into the room. You want to lower your shutter speed down because there's not really a lot of action happening. Maybe to a 100, you know, 1 over 100. Um, lower your aperture way down to probably 1.8, 1.4, however low you can go. And then you're going to boost your ISO up, probably 800 to 1,000, depending on how dark the room is. So those are some two situations where all three of them work together. These are a lot of technical things, but I'm trying to break it down for you. Once you know how to shoot in a manual way, once you learn how to get off of auto, and you learn how to go to the M function, which is manual, um, what I always tell people when they're starting out in photography, I say you, you can use the auto function, but most cameras have presets on the top. Maybe it's a mountain, maybe it's a flower, maybe it looks like a person. And let's say um, you want to start off there first. That's what I would recommend. It, it still allows you to have some control um, in choosing which uh, situation that you're in, but it gives you a lot of um, the automatic functions of the camera as well. If you're slightly more advanced, I would go to the A function where you're only adjusting just the aperture, but the camera will adjust everything else. The S function means that you are only adjusting the shutter speed and the camera will compensate for everything else. The M function, you are completely in control of everything on your camera, which is the only way that I shoot. It took me about a year to two years to honestly be very comfortable in it, but now I can't even imagine taking a picture without it. The auto settings on the camera have only really been um, on the market very good for the last 10 years or so. So back when there was film photography, people had to know manual settings. People had to know exactly what they wanted because there was no automatic settings. So as an encouragement to you, people have been shooting manual for a lot longer than shooting automatic. And it, it kind of goes back to the, the beauty and the purity of making an image, making it beautiful, making it something that is your vision. So hopefully in the last couple of minutes you've learned ISO, shutter speed, and aperture and how they work together to make your picture look amazing. So stay tuned. This is Crystal Marshall from MarshallStudioPhotography.com and I hope that answers some of your questions about the three elements shutter speed, ISO, and aperture that make your photo amazing. Thank you.